Hello, sixth graders. This is Skill Builder 13, and this week we are going to continue to look at a day at Disneyland. You guys have done such an amazing job working through this piece so far, and believe it or not, after this week you're going to have one more lesson on it, and then you will know the whole thing. So keep up the good work, and we're going to pick up this week with measure 75, and we're going to go all the way to the end of the page, so measure 146. Measure 75 is the tune You Can Fly, which is from Peter Pan. Some of you may be familiar with that melody. This is a much slower version than what's in the Peter Pan movie, if you've seen that before. It's very beautiful, and there are different times when certain sections or groups of sections are featured. And so you can see you have some extended periods of rest, but when you come in, it's super important that you know where to come in and what notes to play and how fast they are going to be to make sure we stick together and keep up with the other middle schoolers and high school players as well. So starting at 75, you have eight measures of rest. This is in 4-4, four, four, so you're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 3, 4, all the way until you get to 8, 2, 3, 4. And it's about that tempo I was counting, maybe a smidge slower. And then you come in starting on a B half note. It sounds like this. that with me. This is where you come in after your eight measures of rest is 75, starting on B. One, two, here we go. Rest, rest, rest. Wonderful. And really making sure you're counting and on the rests you rest. Don't hold those notes through and make them two beat notes. Everyone actually in the orchestra rests on those beats, so it should be complete silence there. Then you have 10 measures of rest. You're going to have lots of practice doing that counting method that we've learned for this piece. And after that, you come in with a D whole note. I bet everyone can sight read this. Let's play this together. One, two, here we go. Excellent. On those quarter notes, be careful that it's B, A, G, skip the F sharp, go to E, and then you go back to F sharp for that whole note. So make sure you don't just do a backward scale. There is a note that's skipped, and then you go back up to it after. Then you have four measures of rest, followed by something that's very similar to what we've already played before. Let's try it together. Start on that B half note. Ready? Here we go. that at the very end of it's the third from the bottom line at the very end of that there are four measures of rest but you'll see that there is a C with a line through it that's a new time signature that we have not learned about and we're not going to spend a lot of time on this year as sixth graders but it's something called cut time and all I need you to know is that it's much faster than what we were just playing the reason that's all you really need to know is when we um, get to your part later in this melody, the best time of your life, you're really just playing on the beat. So if you can feel that the beat is faster, you'll be able to play this pretty easily, even without fully understanding how cut time works, okay? So cut time is just a much faster way of counting. Instead of counting to four, you're going to count one, two, one, two. So at measure, well, excuse me, where the time signature changes, you have four measures of rest. So it would be one, two, 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 three, two, four, two. And then at measure 13, 113, you restart your counting. One, two, 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 and count all the way up to eight, two. Now at this point, you all have pizzicato notes. And we actually just talked about this in class, how to properly play pizzicato in a piece without putting your bow on the stand. Because that not only is it going to look bad, it's also going to make a sound that 
what is not written in the music, right? It doesn't say set your bows down and make a clinky sound. Also, sometimes in music, you won't have time to pick your bow up. In this case, you would, but I'd like you to practice this technique anyway. So when you are playing pizzicato in a piece of music, you take your bow and you hold it with a bad bow hold, the kind of bow hold that you should not be using when you play. Then you can make your L, and if you think back to pre-bow, when you first learned how to play pizzicato, we made an L and put our thumb up against the fingerboard and then used our index finger to pluck over the fingerboard. So you can do the same thing. You just have the bad bow hold. Here's your L up against the fingerboard, and now I can pluck with my first finger. So you're just doing something with these three fingers that are not involved in plucking. They are holding the bow, okay? Let's play uh, in the best time of your life where you come in pizzicato. All right, you ready? One, two, here we go. A, A, D. Now B, E. One, two, 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 three, two. Here's G, here we go. G, D, G, D, G, D, G, D, G, D, G, G, D, G, E, G. Excellent. So there is one E in that last section. Make sure you catch it. The last measure is E, G. And then you have... Uh, quite an extended rest here after that and so we'll deal with that stuff later but your job this week is to make sure you can play from 75 to the very end of the first page with confidence there's just lots of little snippets where you play and then other times where you rest now in class when we work on this together I will play the types of things that you're going to hear I obviously can't play every part at once but the main melody of those sections while you're resting so you can kind of Get into your ear, okay, this is what I'm listening for. When we get together with all of the 7th and 8th graders and the high schoolers, when it's not my turn to play and I'm counting and ready to come in, this is what I'm listening for to help me know when to come in. And, of course, counting along with that is going to be helpful as well. All right, so your job before the next day one is to make sure that this whole first page of A Day at Disneyland is really solid because once we learn this whole thing, I have some other awesome music to share with you for our concert in May. All right, everyone have a great day. Thank you for watching your skill builder and I will see you in class.